I'm gonna apologize because my voice is so raspy today. I feel like I'm coming down with a cold, but I didn't want to get too far away from this investigation. And this is the most that I've tried to talk today, so please bear with me. We just covered a live stream that the Robbie Harvey had uploaded. An alleged new victim of JP's called him, claimed to be kidnapped. He received a phone call again, I think a week or so later, from uh, Miss Becky, who is accusing him of having inappropriate explicit text message conversations with her minor daughter. Now Robbie throughout the duration of the phone call was able to convince Becky that what she thought was untrue, but Robbie did ask Miss Becky if he, she would be willing to send him all of the evidence she had. Remember she claimed that she had at least 300 pieces of evidence and as of him making that live stream she didn't send any of it to him. We're going to be covering a live stream today from JLR Investigates. I love Love this but they tracked a flight we don't know if JP was on it or not but there was a flight uh, coming from North Carolina was JP on this flight was the flight on its way to come and pick up JP where could he be going so that's the live stream we're gonna be reacting to today however there is one more detail in the phone call from Robbie and Miss Becky that I want to talk about throughout the phone call Miss Becky kept accusing several people of having inappropriate contact with her daughter including the Robbie Harvey, including J.P. Miller, and including someone by the name of CJ. She was rambling about her daughter being obsessed with content creators. Not that J.P. is a content creator, but the Robbie Harvey is. I'm going to do a little bit of digging off camera because I want to get right into this live stream, but definitely I think maybe worth noting because Miss Becky is making allegations that he had inappropriate conduct with a minor. So. JLR investigates. Come on in, everyone. Uh, the Solid Rock Church plane is in the sky right now, and we are tracking it. It is going to an undetermined location, and this is according to Flight Radar 24. It seems like it left uh, an airport in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, and is heading south. It might be going to Myrtle Beach, but we're monitoring the situation. Come on in and let's talk. Uh, it's gonna, let's blow the paint up a little bit um, and uh, the track, let's make it a little bit closer and uh, show you what in the world is going on. This plane, yeah, this plane seems like it left. It's a Cirrus SR-22 and keep in mind folks, this plane hasn't been in use for a while. Now suddenly JP, Miller, it's it's put it in put it in closer. Makes me wonder how this plane is being paid for. We remember JP talking about like traveling to other churches and stuff, but it's it's a little if you're just traveling within like let's say the Carolinas, I understand that they're big states. To get from Boston to New York about four hours. I highly doubt you're traveling daily, maybe weekly. Keep in mind that he is still under FBI investigation. He hasn't been seen at church for the last, you know, while here. Oh. But we got a plane up in the sky. What is going on here? Who's in the plane and where is it going? N623SR. Magnolia plans to come into the chat um, in a second. And maybe we could do explaining and see what in the world is going on. What's happening here, folks? So according to Flight Radar, or what they posted was uh, an individual, a journalist, put out this information and said the plane uh, didn't end up departing Rocky Mount until 1.29 p.m., meaning now it's expected to arrive at 2.15. While I'm watching this, I'm kind of having flashbacks to Jesse Duplantis, the Jesse Duplantis service, where he talked a lot about private jets and traveling by plane and how fast his jet was going. It's far greater than the value of a sail. I gave away two jets. How much money it is? Millions. I got a jet out there. We were doing almost 700 miles an hour coming here. We were at 699 miles an hour. That's smoking. JP made a comment in the background about going to hide in Jesse's plane. All the sermons had been taken down the last time I looked. Let me 
take a look at that real quick, see if those sermons are back up on Solid Rock or not. I'll download my video of Jesse Duplantis again and see if I caught that clip so I can uh, insert it into this video. There's a Solid Rock that does come up when you Google it, but I don't think this is it because it doesn't have the same logo. Anywhere in the world, one stop. I'm gonna try to hide in it. I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I'm gonna go get in it and wait for you. Yeah, come on. Possibly, uh, South Carolina, but I'm not so sure because it's 232. So a plane that is registered to the Solid Rock Market Common Church. A plane, uh, a, uh, a flight registration. Going back to the comment about how this flight was paid for, do you think it's possible that, you know, this, this flight was paid for through tithing and through church funds? It was registered to fly this morning according to flightaware.com. Probably arriving in Myrtle Beach. Is J.P. Miller in that plane, folks? Come on in the chat, Magnolia, when you get the chance. Let's talk. This is interesting. And there it is. Zoom it up closer. Let's get this thing a little bit closer so we can just see it in real time. Come on in, Magnolia. Are you in? Yeah, hey. Can't hear you. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So what's going on here? Well, we got an alert that the plane was on the move. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we got the tips that the we got the tips that the plane was on the move. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting. So, if you look at the flight plan over here, it's saying the destination is not available, and I I thought that pilots had to file their flight plans ahead of time. If there happens to be any pilots, listen, my cousin's a pilot, so it's not that far-fetched. If any pilots happen to be watching this or at least educated in what she's about to speak about here, the, uh, if you look to the top left where it says RWI to NA, so it's not giving us a destination. I guess in what case might you see that? Remember when we took the private plane down in, uh, on the border and he had to call ahead to let them know we would be landing. Remember that? Yeah. Well, so, a journalist by the name of Beth Braden, uh, Luna Shark Media put out that it is en route to um, Myrtle Beach Airport. Yeah. So this is the plane that he got that he said the reason he needed this plane was so he could travel all over south carolina and north carolina to meet with other pastors and give them financial counseling if he's just going between the carolinas then what is the need to use a full-blown plane i mean i get getting there within convenient timing but the cost of it alone that was his reason for getting the plane yeah, but this is the first time the plane has been up, right? Since they got it. Bear with me today, like I said. Not feeling that hot. I gotta eat something. We're gonna get through this. <laughs> I just realized that I was around someone recently who just tested positive for COVID. And I've never gotten COVID before, fingers crossed. I swear to God. Yeah, I don't think that it's... We, we've really seen it take too many flights. It's at 4,000 feet right now. So this plane has been sitting idly for how long and why now? Also, you would think if he's under investigation, he would kind of want to stay put and not travel too much. Ground speed, speed 146 KTS. Yeah. So it is, it is headed south. It's about to go over Lake Waccamaw. Mm, lake Waccamaw. I remember that lake name because I did a video a couple months back when I first started covering Micah's case. Basically following her route of travel where she would leave the gas station where she was the last seen on surveillance to the time that she got to Lumber River and made the 911 phone call allegedly. I was looking at potential routes of travel kind of trying to get a feel for why she chose Lumber River. I believe they're still in North Carolina coming back down south. They could either be coming to pick up JP or he could be coming back 
from possibly visiting another church. I also have a feeling that JP is trying to lie low until the investigation comes to a close and then we'll come back to Solid Rock. I wonder how often JP actually sees his kids because he, if he's going to be traveling, I'm assuming the kids would be with Allison, his ex-wife. But remember in JP's interview how he was talking about him and Micah would do everything together and pick up the kids and blah, 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 blah. I don't even think you have much custody of your own children, JP. So you're getting close to where, um, believe it or not, it's, this plane is a little bit right now just to the east of Lumber River State Park. Oh my god. Thank you for zooming out too. Okay, we're at... There's an airport down here on the right. It's going to go right over uh, this lake. Move it over a little bit so we can see. Uh, Magnolia is controlling the... Uh, where is it at? I can't see it. It's right here. Okay. Yeah, see? It's about to go right over the lake right here. I mean, we thought, you know, this is kind of newsworthy here. We kind of did the same thing when Jerron Vandersloot was getting extradited for the murder of Natalie Holloway and Brian Kohlberger when he was in route. And a lot of interest out there with uh, J.P. Miller. Now, I heard that J.P. has not been to Solid Rock Church in the last couple um, weeks. Yeah, but Yesterday, Robbie put out, Robbie Harvey put out a, a tweet and he said, um, a few people for the first time since the death of Micah Miller, there were a few people not in attendance at Solid Rock. John Paul, Wayne Miller, and Susie Skinner were all absent yesterday. Does anybody know or have heard anything like are JP and Susie publicly seeing each other as a couple anymore or did that die down because... JP was alleging that there was nothing romantic between the two, that they were just out as friends. But how is that, how is that progressed? Okay, but now Reginald Wayne Miller, JP's father, and Susie, and JP are all missing from service? And I talked to the neighbors, and they were saying that they saw Dr. Miller there at the house, and people think that he's actually living there with John Paul now. Are these the same neighbors that Becky was claiming that talk amongst themselves about how much JP is allegedly a creep messing around with the teens in the neighborhood? The same neighbors are saying that Wayne might be living with JP now? I believe that Becky was saying that everyone in the neighborhood was, like, talking about like murmuring there were rumors going around about what jp and that cj guy would were doing why was that only mentioned to the robbie harvey through miss becky his sister lacy recently returned after not being seen for a few weeks mm -hmm. um, and the neighbors said that there's also been a little guy like a 20 year old guy that they they think might have like intellectual disabilities or something like that. Mm -hmm. He's been hanging around John Paul's house and he's been seen uh, riding the four wheeler and cleaning the four wheeler off. And so we don't know what's up with that. Was Lacey saying, I'm only reacting to what they said because I'm not entirely sure, but does Lacey live around the area? Was she attending church and now she's also not being seen? They're seeing Wayne at the house, but they don't know for sure if he's living there with JP or just visiting often. And now there's an alleged disabled male riding JP's four-wheelers around. It seems what like... About the, what about the other allegation that the neighbor uh, called and said a bunch of underage people inside their home a few months ago, that 911 call. Yeah. So it could be affiliated with the First Academy or Reginald Wayne Miller. Wait, somebody called, wait, a possible house party with a bunch of minors? I'm not sure, but this kid, the 20-year-old that they're talking about, he lives in the neighborhood, and they were, people are wondering where his parents are. I wonder if that's CJ, who Miss Becky was referring to. He's been hanging around at the house, apparently. Really? Well, that's it. That's interesting news. But other than that, there seems to not be a lot of buzz. It seems like once this global settlement was in play, that um, 
J.P. Miller kind of shut up. Yeah, we ever since that day when they announced the settlement, I don't think that we've heard from him, have we? No, um, we haven't. And I do want to put out there that it, I believe, remember where we discussed that the Dare to Care, Micah's name was on the Dare to Care before and then after the settlement, her name got taken off the Dare to Care? Yeah. Well, I believe the family told J.P. Miller to remove their name, remove her name from the Dare to Care. Because it's no longer yeah. awesome. Yeah, because they were trying to raise money and I, I'm sure that it was offensive to the parent, to the family, but um, it just, I, I do think that part of that settlement was that they wouldn't be able to disparage each other, each side back and forth. Yeah. That was probably part of the agreement. And that's why, because some people speculated that John Paul knew that the settlement was coming and that's how come he did his little whirlwind media tour right there at the end with the interview on News Nation and, you know, a bunch of the other stuff he was doing online. That could be the case that JP felt confident that the settlement was going to go through, so felt okay doing his media tour. Although I feel like he's definitely contradicted himself and given us things to look into in these interviews. Um, but as far as the protests yesterday, I was told there were still a few people out there, um, but it seems to be dwindling down. Oh man, I was kind of worried about that. Um, I don't know if the comment also made during the settlement had anything to do with that, where it kind of dissuaded protesters from coming back. But I wouldn't be surprised if you saw less and less protesters, and then JP shows back up as Solid Rock. And yeah, JP was not there yesterday, or the week before. And he had been going every single Sunday. So this plane has lost 14, uh, 1,400 feet in the last, uh, since we've been on. Yeah, they're descending. They're descending. They're descending. The plane is now at uh, 20, now it's 2,400 feet. 2,300 feet. So uh, this is registered. Uh, it's a it's a Cirrus SR twenty two plane. I just wanted to play a clip real quick because they talk about the cost of this plane. It was around four hundred thousand dollars. According to um, Wikipedia, it holds five seats and goes a top maximum speed of two hundred and thirty four miles an hour. Cruising speed of a two hundred and eleven. Okay, so we're not talking a big jet here. We're talking just a couple passenger plane. You can actually see it up in the top left hand corner there. I, I wonder if they're using a private runway or they're going to be going to a public airport. Again, it, it still looks like they're traveling south. Yeah, and, and Mark Hoffman, we, remember we saw in, in the spring, we saw on his Instagram earlier this year, he had made a post about getting his pilot's license. And all of that happened at the same time that they purchased the plane. So it seems like they had a plan to get this plane and Mark would be the pilot. So assuming Mark is the one flying this plane right yeah, now. Yeah, he, he could be flying. Theory, J.P. Miller's best friend just talked about getting his pilot's license while J.P. Miller is under investigation. And not to mention, again, that little comment that J.P. made in Jesse Duplantis' sermon. Try to hide it. Is this a getaway plan? <gasps> Possibly Mark went to go get this plane that was probably hanging out in a hangar if it hasn't been in flight in a while and it's on its way. I wonder if it's coming all the way to Myrtle Beach or if it's going to stop at one of the other airports. Could be J.P. Miller in there. They could once they park this plane, assuming that it's going to Myrtle Beach. I think it's like pretty... If you zoom it out a little bit, zoom it out a little bit. He's going to show us real quick where the plane actually started. Rocky Mount. Wilson Airport, North Carolina. Yeah, so clearly you could see on the map here that it's taking a beeline towards Myrtle Beach. And if it's just coming from North Carolina and hasn't been in flight for a while, I'm doubting JP's on that flight at the moment. I think it might be going to pick him up. What's the plan here? Now, we've made a video 
it's no secret that J.P. Miller is under criminal investigation. We made a video about this plane in the past, and we titled it Flight Risk. Now, he's been awful quiet lately, and now the plane is going in route to a place where he can, anyone in Myrtle Beach can now just jump on the plane and rock. Is yeah. there a plan for them to take a trip or to get out of Dodge? And they're getting that plane down there to be able to make that move. That's a very logical question, considering someone that is under federal investigation, which he is, and we don't know if he recently spoke to the FBI. We do know that Tom Winslow, a key figure centered in this case, was posted on himself that he there was uh, he was being interrogated, right? Mm hmm. Is there something brewing? Yeah, it seems like it seems like some weird little things are happening behind the scenes that we might not know about. Did the plane stop? Yeah, it's like literally not moving. Zoom in. Oh boy! Now it's moving. It it just it, it it's gonna just jump a minute. You'll see it. It's gonna do like a jump. It's it's still it's still rocking, but it's just it's just going. I don't know if it's just not registering. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So it's going over Longwood right now. Like they're literally crossing into the border. It's at two thousand feet. It's moving at one hundred thirty six kts, which is um, I think it's one hundred fifty three miles an hour. Yeah, it's moving at 153 miles an hour. It's about to pass Carolina shores. Yeah, folks, we're watching the Solid Rock plane take off for the first time in months, and we're just seeing what's up. You know, we're still following this Micah Miller case extensively. Not much information out. I'll link the full live stream down below. I do want to jump to where the plane lands. So they're doing like a weird route. They kind of do some circles. They go parallel to the highway a bit. But he ends up landing right about here. Oh, it's going to Grand Strand Airport. It went to Grand Strand Airport. Go back. It landed at Grand Strand oh, that's Airport. What I thought. Go yeah. a little bit north. Right there. It's right here. Yeah, zoom that in. It didn't land. It landed at Grand Strand Airport. I did not see that. So the little indicator for the plane disappears after the plane lands, but we know they landed in Grand Strand Airport. North Myrtle Beach, yes, South Carolina. So from Solid Rock Baptist to Grand Strand Airport, it's only about a 35-minute drive. Do you think JP is on that flight? Do you think he's getting on that flight? Where do you think Susie and Wayne are? Who is the guy in JP's house riding his four wheelers? I feel like we have more questions than we do have answers right now. As the investigation continues to unfold, I'll make sure I keep you guys updated. Until then, if you don't want to miss any new videos, please consider subscribing. I also have left an email down below if you guys have any video suggestions for me, and I hope to see you guys in my next one.